In our motorbike sequence, we showed how the landscape might look if we were barreling through it at close to the speed of light. Since then, inspired by this sequence, Ping Kang Seung at Carnegie Mellon University produced an exact computer animation. This is what you'd see if you were traveling at ordinary speeds through this red and white lattice. But this is how it would appear if you were traveling the same route at close to the speed of light. We're probably many centuries away from traveling close to the speed of light and experiencing time dilation. But even then, it might not be fast enough if we wanted to travel to some distant place in the galaxy, say, and then come back to Earth in our own epoch. Some years after completing Cosmos, I uh, found myself taking time out from my scientific work to write a novel, uh, a novel about travel to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. I was willing to imagine beings and civilizations uh, far more advanced than we, but I wasn't willing to ignore the laws of physics. Was there, even in principle, a way to get very quickly to uh, 30,000 light years from Earth? So I put this question to my friend Kip Thorne of the California Institute of Technology. He's a leading expert on the nature of space and time. Kip thought about it for a while and then uh, answered with about 50 lines of equations, which showed that a really advanced civilization might establish and hold open wormholes, which uh, we might think of as tubes through the fourth dimension, which connect the Earth with another place in the universe without having to traverse the intervening distance, something like crawling through a wormhole in an apple. I was very happy with this result, and I used it as a key plot device in, in contact. But such wormholes through space would also be time machines, it seemed to me. And I used that notion in, in my novel Contact as well. Kip Thorne and his colleagues later proved, or so it seemed, that time travel of this sort was possible. Here, look at this. The key question being explored now is whether such time travel can be done consistently with causes preceding effects, say, rather than following them. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? Even if time travel of this sort is really possible, it's far in our technological future. But maybe other beings, much more advanced than we, are voyaging to the far future in the remote past not a measly 40 years ago on Earth, but to witness the death of the sun, say, or the origin of the cosmos.